Our subject today is storytelling. And the reason I wanted to talk about storytelling is because most of us are doing lives and we're all stuck at home. So we have to interact with people in a different way, this way. And so I wanted to make sure that I kind of imparted to you guys the knowledge that I have from doing pageants and interviews and coaching for so many years, 25 years. Without further ado, I'm going to tell you guys kind of my top three tips for having an amazing live, an amazing interview, or just making a friend. Number one is how to make a connection with somebody right away. And the way that you do that is to share something personal. Like I was saying before, if you guys watched the beginning of my live, if you think about it, the time when you really make a friend is when you share something personal. You can know somebody for a really long time. You can work together for years. You can go to the same school. You can see each other at social events for the longest time. But the moment that that person shares something personal about themselves with you, you think of them as a friend and vice versa. And so that's something we really need to consider when we're doing our lives because although you might be trying to sell eyelashes or makeup or any number of other things through doing your lives, that's not what's going to resonate with people. What's actually going to resonate with people and make them feel close to you and excited about seeing you is feeling like they have a connection to you. And that connection comes from feeling like you're friends. And that comes from them knowing things that are personal about you. And it doesn't have to be overtly, inappropriately personal. As a matter of fact, it should not be that. Like I was saying before, I always tell Isabel, do not let out all your crazy at one time. Don't. Nobody wants all that. They're not going to like you. But if you let your crazy out in little doses, they'll get used to each little bit of crazy. And over the long run, they'll be like, I love her. She's so crazy. Right? But right now, on day one, on moment one of this new friendship, just a little crazy is just enough for people to feel connected to you and like your friends and like they can trust you and you can trust them. But it's not weird. You don't want to be weird. When you suddenly overshare, it feels really strange for that person who's being overshared with, right? So what I suggest and what, what I've taught people to do for the longest time is to find what it is that truly resonates with them. In my case, I really gave that a lot of thought in pageants with platforms. And a platform is a charity. I promote the American Lung Association and volunteer, and my kids do, and we do that because we lost my mom to COPD. So that made a huge impact on my life. I can talk about that and share that with people and let them know that I do that because I don't, I never want that for anyone else and how hard it was for me. But without that being uncomfortable or scary or strange or too much detail, but enough that people want to help. You know, you want people to want to be on your side. And that's a big deal. And whatever it is that's important to you doesn't have to be life or death. And it doesn't have to be a charity. It can be whatever it is that you feel really strongly about and that you have a personal connection to. That is the very most important thing is that personal connection. There's a million different examples. Um, for example, there was one girl that I was training for pageants for interview. So she wanted to um, have her platform be llamas. And I was like, llamas aren't a platform. Llamas, that's, that's just not a platform. That's just an animal you like. Do you have a personal connection to the llamas? No. I just love llamas. And I'm like, yeah, that's not a platform. So as I talked to her about things that were important to her, it just sort of slipped out that she was teaching her grandpa to read. That's huge. What an amazing, beautiful thing to do. And so instead, she then worked on adult literacy, which was a much better platform for her, and she really enjoyed doing it. She got so much more joy out of doing that than talking about llamas, which she just liked llamas. But that's not really something that you're going to, you know, base your life on. It's, not, it's nothing that's going to connect you to people. But teaching your grandpa to read and, and volunteering for adult literacy, that's an amazing thing to do. So these kinds of things, when you can find something that is truly meaningful for you and share it, that is where you're really going to connect with people. And that's what's going to resonate. So when you're doing that, um, it's just really important to remember just to be your authentic self. It is totally okay. And the best way to be your authentic self, in my personal opinion, is to tell stories. Real stories from your real life. And it's okay if they're silly and it's okay if you, you know, go down the rabbit hole and chat about other things and it's fine. People who are watching you, they're watching you because they like you. 
They're not watching you because they like your eyelashes. They like you. They might want to buy eyelashes from you because they like you and they want to support you. And also, what a great way to do it because they get lashes that they do like. I really, really want you guys to give some deep down thought to what it is that is meaningful to you and uniquely you. What skills do you have? But not just what are they, why? And why are they important to you? You might be awesome at making jewelry. And you can say, okay, great. I'm gonna do lives about my jewelry making. And then I'm gonna, ha I'm gonna look fabulous when I do it. And I'm gonna wear my lashes and I'm gonna wear my Ignite or my TV Red. And as I'm doing it, I'm gonna mention those things. So that's great, they're learning something. But it's not really going to resonate with them unless while you're making that jewelry, you tell them the story about why. Why do I like making jewelry? What was it like when I was a little girl? Or boy, in this, I mean, anybody can make jewelry. What was it like when I was a child to make jewelry? When did I start doing it? What made me start doing it? If I had a hard time, did it make me feel better? What was that about? All of those things are so much more interesting than just the jewelry and just the makeup. And those are the things that really, really, really will draw people to you. When I was, when I was coaching people, I always felt bad because um, without fail, the first pageant, interview coaching lesson ended in tears. Well, it was pretty much in tears the entire second half because in order to figure out what it is that really makes you who you are, you have to think about all the hard times and then talk through them and then figure out how to talk about them without crying. And that's a process and it's not an easy process, but it's just a really important thing to do. It's important in life, really, to know yourself and to ask questions to yourself and think about your motivations. It's like one of the most important things you can actually do with your time. I mean, I highly recommend it all the time, period. Just asking yourself, why do I think this? You know, why is that important to me? What am I doing? There's nothing wrong with being really self-aware. It's a great thing. And right now is a great time to do it because there's all this craziness going on. And it's an awesome time to think about what it is that makes you feel how you feel in this environment and how, how your background will resonate with other people because they're lonely, they're stuck at home and they're bored and they want to talk to somebody and they want to have somebody interesting to interact with. So this is the perfect time for you to really get out there and say, okay, here's what means something to me, here's why, here's how I'm gonna share it. And just like I'm sharing this with you, the reason this is so important to me is because pageantry was really important to me. There was a whole bunch of reasons, but the first one, I thought it was because I had stage fright. And that's I, nothing wrong with wanting to go out on stage because you have stage fright and you wanna overcome something, that's great. But I think it was really more than that. It was because I just really felt like I needed to be able to go out and prove myself. I just didn't feel like I had done anything big or hard in the world and I wanted to do something in this world. And, and that was an outlet for me. And then as I worked on it, I realized how really difficult it was. And over the course of time, I realized how much help I needed. That needing help really is what brought me here today, all the way here. That thing where I realized, oh my gosh, this is super hard. I don't have anyone to help me. No one's willing to train me. No one's willing to give me their time is what made me want to do this. You never really know until you sit down and you think, what was my motivation? But realizing how truly hard it is to do something big without a mentor is what, what brought me all the way here. I didn't have all the same resources that maybe everybody has. And I realized over the course of time that like the thing that really, really, really made a difference to me was having a mentor. And so that's why I'm here. That's what I wanna be for you guys and what I wanna to bring to you guys through all the people that we bring together. And you guys each have your own special thing that is important to you and resonates with you and makes you happy and makes you want to move forward that you've translated into the work that you do and the special skills that you have. Share those things and look great when you do it and talk about whatever products it is that you want to promote while you do it. But be authentic and do that. Don't just sell makeup. Unless makeup really is that one thing that that is your thing. But for most of us, it's going to be something else too. It is amazing to share that whatever it is message you have, whatever your motivation is, whatever it is that brought you there, that's the thing you should share with people. Okay, so next point. I know that was a long first point. Next point is tell stories. So by telling stories, what I mean is don't give lists. People tend to write down three or four things 
that they want to get a, impart when they're doing a live or an interview. And when somebody says, for example, why do you want this job? The person in the interview might say, well, I'm looking for a job that has um, a flexible schedule and lets me use my skills and pays well. Okay, well, that's an interesting reason to want a job. No, it really isn't. It's actually the same reason they've gotten from every single person that walked into the room. And it's also not true. Why do you really want the job? Really, really, really. What is the thing that really makes you want this job? Tell them a story, a real story from your actual life. And it could be when you were 10. Why do you want this job? Gosh, I remember when I was 10 years old watching Miss America on television. And I thought she was the most glamorous person in the world. And I did not think that could be me. I didn't think that that even applied to me. That's what I thought, for real. And over the course of time, I realized I could, I can change things. I can practice. I can put on some makeup. I can wear lashes. There's a million things that I could do to better myself. And maybe it could be me. And now that I'm an adult, I realize it can be me. And that's why I'm here. Because I'm willing to do the work to be Miss America. That is a much better answer. And it's true. And in my case, it was Miss America. But still, the point is that no matter what it is that you're trying to get across to people, a list isn't compelling. But a story is. And whatever your story is, the true deep down reason why you love something, that's so much better than a list of its good attributes. Especially when you're talking about yourself. A list of attributes is never going to be as powerful as what it is that really, really brought you to them. So I hope that you guys will just really, really think about telling stories. And one of the things that I find that helps people get into the mode of telling stories is to, instead of answering a question or instead of just starting off a statement, start it immediately with when I was. Because then you can't help it. You have to tell a story. You can't just say the answer is blank. You have to lead into it with the story as to what the answer was. So when people ask you a question, this is a great way to practice, even if you're on an elevator and somebody says, oh, where are you going? And you can say, when I was six, I hated elevators. I'm making this up, by the way. I hated elevators. And so today I'm just going to the top of this building because I really just wanted to overcome that. And now whenever I see an elevator, I go right to the top. How cute would that be, right? I mean, that's so much better than I'm going to the top floor. Who cares? Everybody thinks it's like, the most amazing thing when they hear something personal about you and it's true and it's not weird or at least not very weird so i really want to impart that to you guys please 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 tell stories and definitely definitely really think deeply about what your motivation is for what you're doing and do that and do that and then just overlay the things that are that you want to accomplish with it whether it's a pageant title or selling eyelashes or any other product or being an influencer and getting a certain amount of people, even if even if you're not getting paid for it, if you're just like, my goal is to have 10,000 people watch me, overlay that. It doesn't need to be the focus. It can just be what you secondarily focus on because the focus should be what uniquely makes you, your unique value. And why? Because the why is absolutely more important than the what. So I hope that that is advice that you guys can use. Um, is that all of them? Yes. Focus on your interest. Tell a personal story. I have my little list here and connect. So those are my pro tips for the day. I hope that that helps you guys. And I hope it gives you something to think about. And if nothing else, even if that doesn't translate into your lives, it's always a good thing to be introspective, especially now when we have so much craziness going on. It'll help you just put your thoughts together.